Welcome as we continue our journey through the Word of God. Today we're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 to 20. Talking about here of how elders should be treated in the church. Paul's setting Timothy up for how to lead the church in Ephesus. And he's, in the previous verses, talked about how to take care of widows, how to make sure that you're a steward of church resources, Timothy. And then he goes on here to talk about the spiritual oversight of the church through leaders uh, who are called elders. He says, let the elders of the church who rule be well counted. Oh, sorry, I'm going to start that again. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Now, these are two references to verses in the Bible that uh, from one's from Deuteronomy chapter 25 and the other's from Luke chapter 10. And so you've got an Old Testament and New Testament reference here that the Apostle Paul is making to Timothy. Remember First and Second Timothy, the last two books that the Apostle Paul writes. The word elder here is those who are in leadership. The focus is made on elders who rule and elders who teach. Not necessarily every elder in a church will be somebody who rules and not every elder will be somebody who teaches. But those who rule well should be counted worthy of double honor. So if a pastor, a leader in the church rules well and labors in the word and doctrine, clearly showing their hard work, that person is worthy of double honor. So part of that double honor means financial support. Paul's already told uh, Timothy, that widows are worthy of honor in the first verse of this chapter, speaking about financial support. So then he says, listen, let the leaders of the church who rule well be counted of double honor, uh, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. So some people think the church shouldn't support church staff and, and that paid ministry is something that shouldn't take place or that you should get paid really poorly. Uh, the church shouldn't be using money to pay for salaries of pastors. It should be helping the needy. Uh, sounds very noble, but it's not biblical, and it doesn't help those who are serving the church. If the needy are worthy of honor and they are truly needy, then those who rule and teach in the church are worthy of double honor. This is the Apostle Paul's statement to Timothy. For the scripture says, and he says, as way to back this up, I'm going to, tell you what the law used to say in Leviticus, in Deuteronomy, sorry, but I'm also going to tell you what was preached about in Luke chapter 10. God and people who serve God, uh, those people should be paid when possible. On the principle, don't muzzle an ox while it treads out grain. Deuteronomy 25, Luke chapter 10, a laborer is worthy of his wages. So very clearly taking care of the financial issue with widows, uh, widows earlier on, now financial issue with leaders in the church. Then he says, now, if you get a leader who's accused of sin, this is what you need to do. Do not receive an accusation against an elder or leader of the church, except from two or three witnesses. Those who are sinning, rebuke in the presence of all that all the rest may also fear. Now, so pretty strong verses. If you find out that it actually is real, then you tell them off in front of everybody. But don't receive it until it's got two or three witnesses. He said, listen, th there's a balance. You need to believe what has been reported, but you also can't act on every bit of gossip that comes along about a leader in a church. But you also cannot, Timothy, afford to ignore serious sin in a leader's life. Either is wrong. Barclay. Nothing does more harm than when some people are treated as if they could do no wrong and others as if they could do no right. Great statement, Adam Clark. The reason of this difference is evident. Those whose business it is to correct others will usually have many enemies. Great caution, therefore, should be used in admitting accusations against such persons. Uh, and I can tell you who's a pastor. You don't always make yourself popular by pointing out things that people shouldn't be doing and trying to exhort them to do the right thing. You don't always make everybody your friend. But and now I want to be friends with everybody, but I'm called to be everybody's pastor who, who says, hey, listen, you're our spiritual shepherd. 
It's not an easy place to be in, and I think this is what Paul's talking to Timothy about. Do not receive an accusation except from two or three witnesses. In other words, just don't automatically accept it. The accusation has to be verified. Um, Timothy, you can't allow false accusations about church leaders to circulate. You have to deal with them and you have to research them and find out if they're true or not. But unfortunately, you can't just take one person's word for it. Why? Because at the heart of uh, most men and women is a sinful nature to gossip. gossip. Uh, not everybody, but it's certainly there in some. And Timothy had dealt with these kind of people in the church in Ephesus. Spurgeon uh, wrote this in uh, a book called Lectures to My Students. When people come to a pastor with gossip, he should say, well, this is very important, this accusation, and I need to give it my full attention. But my memory isn't so good, and I have a lot to think about. So can you write it down for me? Spurgeon said that that'll take care of most of them because most people don't want to write down their own gossip when they know it's gossip. If it's real, they'll want to write it down. Very practical point from uh, Spurgeon as a leader. Those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all. Uh, if a leader is in sin and it's been found out, then it has to be address, addressed forthrightly in public and that to actually instill fear in others that they shouldn't do the same. A lot of churches have had a lot of issues because sin in, in leadership was not dealt forthrightly with. And it's very important that everybody understand that leadership in the church doesn't shield you from accountability. It actually ends up making you more accountable. And the church should never excuse not dealing with genuine sin publicly. That's not always popular, not always comfortable, not always liked, but it's what the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy here in these verses. So what do you observe out of this? Again, just a short little uh, passage here but so much meat in all these verses that uh, the Apostle Paul is teaching Timothy. So there you go. What do you observe? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that we can observe so many things from this. But God, thank you. You've called us to a level of accountability that accompanies responsibility. And I pray, Lord, that you would help each of us who are leaders in whatever sphere we are in, whether we're in the church or in our workplace, that you would help us to live to a standard that reflects your godly values. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.